looking at this book here. It's uh, Tim O'Connor's The Feeling of Greatness. It's the Mo Norman story. And I'm looking at Mo on the cover and here he is. There's a Cadillac in the background and he's hitting a driver off a Coke bottle. And, and he just reminds me of all these amazing stories about this character. And I mean, I'm extremely passionate about Mo. I, I um, uh, you know, my initial meeting of Mo was to uh, become a better golfer. But then once you meet this character and you, and you hear these stories about him and you see this, um, this incredible, not only golfer, but this interesting human being. You can't help but fall in love with him. Yeah. And then um, I can't think of a more interesting story than Mo Norman. Well, and isn't that what we're after, really, in this documentary, is to, is to find the great stories, condense them, and, and make sense of them. Because sometimes the stories uh, compete, you know. They don't always necessarily agree with one another. But, uh, and that's because they're outrageous. I mean, who hits golf balls out of Coke bo uh, off of Coke bottles except for Mo. And to me, see, you were into it for the golf. I didn't golf when I met Mo. The reason I met Mo was I saw this 1995 uh, Golf Digest article that said Mo Norman, you know, knows what nobody else knows. And uh, I, I opened it up and I'm reading it and uh, two sentences or paragraphs in it says, his friends call him the Rain Man of Golf. Well, I did know something about Rain Man having invented that one. And I, I, I thought, well, if this is a time for me to, you know, get into golf, let's do it through this character, Mo Norman. And, but by the time I was done with the article, I couldn't really believe he could be that good. I really thought, people are just saying this because he's so eccentric and he's such an underdog. And then I find out, no, he is really as good as when Tiger Woods says it. Um, you got to something. Got to believe it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I was making documentaries. That's how I started as a storyteller, is with a um, 1972 60-pound reel-to-reel uh, Sony Portapack. Was the first video, and uh, you know it's considered portable. But 60 pounds on your shoulder and a camera and a mic built in. Black and white, of course. Um, it was uh, it, it was uh, tough to really be, you know, a, a clandestine kind of a filmmaker. I mean, everybody saw you with the camera, but I started by finding interesting people just to put on tape. And when I saw their their face in black and white on a on a television screen speaking, somehow it had more authority than just talking to them face to face. And as a sort of latent storyteller, I said, I've got to find a different way to tell stories, and I'm going to do it through video or film. And so here, 40 years later, Mo Norman, for me, is the greatest untold story. Why do you think, why do you think people, I mean, I have my interests in, in Mo Norman, obviously, in, um, but why do you think people find underdogs so interesting, and, and especially a character like Mo, because um, I know, I mean, I'm, I'm extremely uh, passionate about, um, especially after I met Mo and spent time with him. I mean, there's the good and the bad side of everything, oh, right? Yeah. But why are people so, I mean, people are so interested in the underdog and they root for the underdogs all the time. And you've, been, you've dealt with that with the movies you've done and the documentaries you've done. And you, and you, you, you specialize in these type of people. What, what do you see in that? Well, my armchair psychoanalysis of this is that, um, these people are, are generally s suffering because of their uniqueness, whether it's a brain injury or a cleft palate or, or you're the elephant man, you know, you're suffering. And people um, are empathetic to pain. And they, probably the, the worst scar you can get, you know, through the suffering inflicted on you, to me, is, is humiliation. Emotional pain. Yeah. And when I, when I um, give screenwriting classes in, in China, for instance, I ask people, I said, tell me the most you know, memorable, fantastic day you've ever had in your life. And there, there's so many kind of, I mean, you can see that they're all, if I say, give me an example of, of uh, your greatest humiliation, every hand goes up right away. People remember those things. Those moments. Those painful. moments, because those scars don't heal. A guy like Mo Norman has got a collection of these scars, 
every day he wakes up. He faces people who, you, you think you can golf like that, you know? The professional's view of Mo as he was trying to become good was that he was pathetic and a joke. Yeah. And when you well, see that injustice, it reminds you of your own pain, and I think that's why we like the underdog. Well, and I, I think the story about Mo too, in, in, the sense of, in that sense, is, is golf is the ultimate, is known as the ultimate elitist sport. And, and when Upper Mo, especially class, when Mo played. You know, a certain uh, feel and look that you gotta present yourself as, which was not Mo in any well, way. Well, and back in the day, especially when Mo was playing, there, there, there wasn't the money that the tour, there wasn't the prestige the tour has now. It was really a close-knit fraternity of golfers yeah. that, that, that kind of revered themselves as, we're this elite group of players and you have to hold yourself to a certain standard. And, and Mo, didn't, Mo didn't fit into any of that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is part of the pain that Mo, he's here he is playing a game that he absolutely loves. Um, that's only, his only identity really was the game of golf and he's finding pain in that as well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's why he really didn't play much on the PGA Tours because he didn't find, he found pain there as well everywhere he went if people didn't accept him.